डेप्थ ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स पार्ट वन टुडे वी विल लर्न हाउ टू मेजर द डेप्थ ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स वंदना डोंट गो टू द पार्क टू प्ले ड्यूरिंग द रेनी सीजन प्ले हियर एट होम वाई पापा आई वेंट फॉर अ वॉक इन द पार्क दिस मॉर्निंग एंड नोटिस दैट द कॉन्स्टेंट डाउनपोर has formed deep pits in the park and you may hurt yourself while playing okay papa but how deep are the pits i didn't have the scale but it seemed to me about 15 cm to a meter deep 15 cm to 1 meter but usually centimeters and meters are used to measure the length and width Why are you telling the depth in centimeters and meters, Papa? Because depth is also measured in meters, centimeters, and kilometers. Can you please explain, Papa? I did not understand. Look, Vandana, different qualities of objects are measured. The length, width, and height of a brick is measured. In the same way, the depth of the pit is measured. What are the objects in our house? whose depth can be measured there are many objects in our house whose depth can be measured look at that cupboard the depth of a cupboard is very useful measurement because more the depth of a cupboard is there will be more space for storage oh so it is not necessary that we only measure the depth of those objects which are below ground Yes Vandana for instance depth is also measured in kitchen utensils because they are filled with goods the deeper the utensil the more quantity it can hold the depth of a vessel helps in determining what could be stored in it what are the other objects whose depth can be measured look you have already discovered examples of pits cupboards and kitchen utensils whose depth is measured Similarly the depth of the well is measured the depth of the sea is measured the depth of the pond is measured and the depth of a planter is also measured okay and the depth of all these is measured in centimeters and meters yes and it can be measured in kilometers as well distance is measured in kilometers what can be so deep to be measured in kilometers papa do you know vandana there are some areas in the sea which are more than 3 kilometers deep more than 3 kilometers deep this is too much there are many objects in nature which surprise us in the next class you will study about these objects now tell me whether you understood what centimeter meter and kilometer can be used to measure yes papa the length width height depth and distance of objects are measured in centimeters meters and kilometers today we learned centimeter meter and kilometer units are used to measure the length width height and distance of objects and how to measure the depths of objects introduction to centimeter part 1 today we will learn how to measure length and how to find if an object is shorter longer or of equal length compared to any other object neha and vandana are playing with sand today and building a fort for their dolls look vandana i have made a fort for our dolls oh wow this looks very beautiful come let's make our dolls sit in this fort hey this fort is small for your doll Your doll can be seen above the fort. 
Yes, you should have checked the height of my doll before building the fort. Yes, you are right. Let's make another fort in which even your doll can easily fit in. Tell me, what is the height of your doll, Vandana? I don't know. Let's measure it now. Look, the height of my doll is 15 cm. Let us find the height of my doll too. The height of your doll is 10 cm. What is the height of the fort? The height of the fort is 12 cm. That's why your doll was not fitting in the fort. We will have to build a 15 cm tall fort for your doll. Let's build it. Now the fort is ready. Let's measure it. The height of the fort is 15 cm now. That means both our dolls will completely fit in this fort now, right? Hmm, now our dolls will fit in this fort easily. Did you notice one thing? What? That my doll is taller than your doll. Yes, but how much taller is your doll than my doll? That's easy to find. Your doll is 10 cm tall and my doll is 15 cm tall. If we subtract the height of your doll, which is 10 cm, from the height of my doll, which is 15 cm, we will come to know how much shorter is your doll from my doll. If we subtract 10 from 15, we will get 5. That means your doll is 5 cm taller than my doll. Yes, and we can also say that your doll is 5 cm shorter than my doll. Yes, now if I want to get a doll which is the same size as that of your doll, then I have to buy a doll of 15 cm. Yes, and if you want to buy a doll taller than my doll, then you have to buy a doll taller than 15 cm. It means that if I want to buy a doll which is of the same size as that of your doll, then I need not carry your doll. I just have to carry the scale, right? No, there is no need to carry the scale too. You can easily ask for a doll of 15 cm. That's right. Does this mean that the measurement of centimeters is same in every scale? Yes, but with such a small scale, we can only measure objects that are up to 15 centimeters in length. If we want to measure objects longer than 15 centimeters, then how do we do it? I believe there are longer scales available. Yes, but where will we get longer scales from? Why don't we ask Papa tomorrow? Maybe he knows. Yes, let us do that. Today we learned that centimeters are used to measure height. By measuring objects, we can find whether an object is shorter, longer or of equal height compared to other objects. Introduction to Centimeter Part 2 Today we will learn that there are different types of scales and different scales are used to measure objects of different lengths. Hello, Uncle. Hello, Vandana. Papa, we want to ask you something. Tell me, what do you want to know? Yesterday we were measuring the height of our doll. We used centimeters to measure the height. But the scale we had was only 15 centimeters long. We want to know how to measure some object if it is more than 15 centimeters long. Is there a scale that is longer than 15 centimeters? Yes, and I have it. You can go to your room and I'll bring it there. Your toys can also be measured with this scale. Look, I have these three scales. Even we have this scale, Papa. Yes, and this is the scale we used yesterday to measure our dolls. Hmm, this scale can only measure objects which are up to 15 centimeters in length. 
Now look at this scale and tell objects of what length can be measured using this scale. Papa, it has a mark up to 30 centimeters on it. That means it can measure objects up to 30 centimeters length, right? Absolutely right. Come, let us measure our toys, Vandana. I will measure the length of my toy giraffe. Now let us see what is its length. Your giraffe is 25 centimeters tall. Now I will measure the height of my bear. Now let's see what is its height. Your bear is 20 centimeter tall. Can you both tell how short is the bear than the giraffe? Yes, uncle. We will subtract the height of the bear from the height of the giraffe. The height of the giraffe is 25 centimeters and the height of the bear is 20 centimeters. Subtracting 20 centimeters from 25 centimeters will leave us with 5 centimeters. This means that the giraffe is 5 centimeters taller than the bear. You both answered it correctly. But Papa, if we want to measure something longer than 30 centimeters, how will we measure it? For that, we will use this scale. But uncle, this scale is very small. No, this scale is very long. So long that it can measure your height. Our height? With this scale? How? To use this scale, the handle outside it has to be held and pulled. Pulling this handle brings the scale out. And with this scale, we can measure the height. Uncle, can you measure our height? Sure. You both stand against the wall. Neha, your height is 138 centimeters. And Vandana, your height is 140 centimeters. This scale is very good. With this, we can measure long objects. Can we take this scale? We will measure the length of more objects, Papa. Why not? You can keep this scale with you. Today we have seen three types of scales which are used to measure length. And different scales are used to measure various objects according to their length. Introduction to Centimeter Part 3 Today we will learn how to use a scale correctly to measure objects and how to measure objects correctly using a broken scale. I think your pencil is shorter than my pencil. It looks equal to me. Let us measure and see. I will measure my pencil and you measure yours. My pencil is 10 centimeters long. Now you measure your pencil. My pencil is 12 centimeters long. I told you, my pencil is longer than your pencil. It should not be because both our pencils are new. Show me. See. Hmm. Now I know why this is happening. What did you understand? Look, you have placed the bottom end of your pencil at 2 cm, while I have placed the bottom end of my pencil at 0 cm. What difference does that make? It leads to incorrect measurements. To measure the correct length of objects using a scale, we should place their lower end at 0, like I have done. Oh, I understand now. The problem with keeping the pencil at 2 cm is that there is no pencil from 0 cm to 2 cm. And I included that length as well in the measurement. Now I'll correct it. I'll keep the pencil at 0 cm. Yes, it's correct. Now you will be able to tell the exact length of the pencil. My pencil is also 10 centimeters. Let's measure some more objects. Oh, your scale is broken. How will I measure the length of objects now? I think we can measure the length of objects with this broken scale too. How? 
Let us try and measure the pencil with this broken scale. We start counting from the least centimeter mark. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And 11. Why is the pencil measuring 11 centimeters? We just measured it. It was 10 centimeters then. It means we have made some mistake. Let's do one thing. Let's try to measure this pencil with the correct scale. Then we might come to know our mistake. I will start counting again. One. Wait. What happened? Look. The correct scale has a zero written at the starting point. While measuring with the broken scale, we are starting from 1. This means whenever we measure using a broken scale, we will still start from 0. Yes, let's measure now. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. 10 centimeters. Now the measurement is correct. We need to remember these two rules while measuring any object. The 0 cm point of the scale will be placed at the beginning of the object and to measure an object, we will start from 0 marking on the scale. Introduction to Meter Part 1 Today we will learn what is meter and the relationship between meter and centimeter. Hey Riyansh and Ayushman, why are you sitting and wasting time? Why don't you practice? Practice for what? Don't you know there is a long jump competition in our school next month and children from other schools are also participating in it. You both have been selected from your class to participate in the boys long jump competition. That means we have to jump? Yes, and not just jump, but jump longer than other children so that you can win the competition. We both are champions at jumping, so we don't need to practice for that. Okay, so tell me, how many meters can you jump? What is meant by meter? Meter is a unit of measurement of length. But ma'am, the length of objects is measured in centimeters, right? That's what sir told us in the classroom. Yes, length is measured in centimeters but it is also measured in meters. Centimeter is a unit of measurement of length. Similarly, there are other units of measurement for measuring length. Meter is one of them. But ma'am, centimeter is already there as a unit of measurement for length. Then why do we need meter? Different units of measurement are required because lengths are different. Centimeter is very small, therefore it is used to measure small lengths. But to measure bigger lengths, meter is used. We measured a break in centimeters. Can we measure break in meters too? No, break is small, therefore it cannot be measured in meters. Only those objects whose length is more than 100 centimeters are measured in meters. Why only bigger than 100 centimeters? Why not smaller than that? Because 1 meter has 100 centimeters. Or we can also say that 1 meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Which means if the length of an object is 100 centimeters, then can we say that the object is 1 meter long? Absolutely right. Why not say 100 centimeters? Okay, come, I will explain you. If I ask you to measure the length of this seat, then what will you measure it with? With this small matchstick or with this big stick? Mm, I will measure it with this stick. Why? Because with this I can measure quickly. I will have to use matchstick several times. You mean to say that measuring this long bench with this stick is much easier and practical. Yes. In the same way, meter is used to measure long things or objects and centimeter is used to measure small things or objects. Now I understand why is long jump measured in meters. Why? Because a long jump will definitely be longer than a hundred centimeter. So it makes it easier and practical to measure a long jump in meters. 
Now we have had a lot of talks. Come jump and show so that we can measure it. Okay. I will jump first. How long did I jump? Let's measure it. You have jumped 2 meters, Ayushman. Can you jump longer than this, Rayansh? It doesn't look very difficult. Let me try. Hey, Rayansh, you have jumped longer than Ayushman. But there is not much difference. Let's measure, then we will know. Rayansh, you have jumped 2 meters and 10 centimeters. 2 meters or 10 centimeters? 2 meters, 10 centimeters. I don't understand, ma'am. Tell me either in meters or in centimeters. Hey, Rayansh, it is not necessary to tell length in just one unit of measurement. We can write it in two units of measurements as well. For instance, your long jump is 2 meters 10 centimeters. This means that you have jumped a length of 2 meters and 10 centimeters. Okay, now I understand. Riyansh has jumped just 10 centimeters more. So if I practice a little, then I will be able to jump longer. I know, you both can win the long jump competition. That is why I am saying that you need to practice. Okay, we will practice now. But how long did the winner of previous competition jump? In the previous competition, the longest jump was 2 meters and 80 centimeters. At present, I can jump 2 meters. I will have to jump an additional 80 centimeters. Hmm, and I will have to jump another 70 centimeters. This is last year's record. It is possible that this year somebody may jump longer. Therefore, keep practicing and try to jump the longest. Okay, madam. Today you learn that meter is a unit of measurement to measure length. One meter has 100 centimeters. Apart from centimeter, meter can also be used to measure length. The length can be represented using both meter and centimeters together. For instance, Rayansh jumped 2 meters and 10 centimeters. Introduction to Meter Part 2 Today we will learn how to convert centimeter into meter. How to convert meter into centimeters and also identify which objects are measured in meters and which objects are measured in centimeters. Ayushman, teacher has given this form. We have to write our height in this so that she can put us in the correct group. Show me. But what is the relation between our height and long jump? I don't know. It is possible that tall people can jump longer. So, groups are made as per people's height. Ayushman, height is to be written in meters and centimeters in this. Yes, but I know my height only in centimeters. Me too. What to do now? I think we can convert centimeters into meters. How? See, Yesterday, madam told us that 1 meter has 100 centimeters. Yes. So? So, with this information, I can write my height in meters and centimeters. I still do not understand. Can you show me? See, my height is 144 centimeters. Now, let's write it like this. 100 centimeters plus 44 centimeters. Oh, now I understand. 100 centimeters equal 1 meter. So, we can write 100 centimeters as 1 meter. Yes, and now I can write in the form 1 meter 44 centimeters. Now, I can also write my height by converting it into meters. Then what are you thinking? Come on, do it quickly. Look, my height is 140 centimeters. So, I can write it as 100 centimeters plus 40 centimeters. Now, I can write this 100 centimeters as 1 meter. Therefore, my height is 1 meter 40 centimeters. 
द फॉर्म हैज बीन फिल्ड कम लेट्स गिव इट टू द टीचर लेट्स गो आई एम लिटिल कन्फ्यूज अबाउट सेंटीमीटर्स एंड मीटर्स वॉट इज द कन्फ्यूजन दैट इज विच ऑब्जेक्ट लेंथ इज मीशर्ड इन सेंटीमीटर्स एंड विच ऑब्जेक्ट इन मीटर्स The teacher had told us that objects with length more than 100 cm are measured in meters and objects with lengths less than 100 cm in centimeters. I know that but how do we figure that out in our daily life? Which objects in our surroundings will we measure in centimeters and which one in meters? Okay, that is easy. See this tree it would be appropriate to measure it in meters as it is very big the height of our school building too should be measured in meters oh okay i get it now hey the teacher is not here come let's keep the form here now tell me which unit will you use to measure this table we will measure it in meter as it is very big So will we measure the stationery items on the teacher's table such as paper, stapler, pen in centimeters? Yes, because all these objects are very small. There is one more question. We converted our height from centimeters to meters, but if we have to convert meters into centimeters then what should we do? That is very easy. We are aware that one meter has hundred centimeters. So, if an object is four meters long, then to convert its length into centimeters, we will multiply it with hundred, which means the length of a four meter object in centimeters would be four multiplied with hundred equals to four hundred centimeter. Yes, absolutely right. Come on, now let's go and practice the long jump. Otherwise our jump will have to be measured in centimeters. <laughs> Today we learned how to convert centimeters to meters and meters into centimeters. And and which objects should be measured in meters and which one in centimeters. <laughs>
Now try to answer the question that I will ask you. Ask me. The length of an object is 200 cm and the length of the second object is 1 meter. Tell me which one among them is longer? What is there to think here? The object with 1 meter length is bigger. How? You only told me that meter is big and centimeter is small. Therefore, 1 meter should be bigger. I knew that would be your answer. What did you think? Have I said anything wrong? Yes, you got it wrong. You do one thing. Draw lines of both these lengths on the floor and see. Okay. First, I will draw a line of 1 meter. Now, I will make a line of 200 centimeters. Hey, the centimeters line turned out to be longer. That means a value written in centimeters can be longer than one written in meter. I am confused. Now, you explain. Centimeter is smaller than meter. Actually, centimeter and meter are units of measurement for measuring length. And objects can be measured both in meters and centimeters. Oh, this means the length which can be written in meters, the same can be written in centimeters too. Yes, now you have understood. This means there will be always confusion in this. Won't be. Just remember one thing. When you are asked to compare lengths written in different units, then first write both of them in the same unit. Meaning? Look, one length is in centimeters and one in meters. Then write down both the lengths in meters by converting centimeters into meters. Okay, now I understand. To convert a meter into centimeter, we will multiply it with 100. So, we can write it as 100 centimeters. Now, if we compare 100 centimeters with 200 centimeters, then we can tell that 200 centimeters is bigger. Now, convert 200 centimeters into meters and see. 200 centimeters divided by 100 gives 2 meters. Yes, even now you can compare 1 meter and 2 meters and say that 2 meter is bigger. Now, I have understood completely. What did you understand? That centimeter and meter are used as units to measure length. To find the length of an object, both its value and unit of measurement are required. And that it is not appropriate to compare the length of different objects only based on their value. To correctly compare lengths of objects, the units of both should be made the same. Introduction to Kilometer Part 1 Today we will learn what is a kilometer? Where is a kilometer used? And what is the relation between kilometer and meter? Ayushman, Ayushman. Yes, Papa. This time we are going to Nainital on a trip. Oh, really? Yes, see, this is the train ticket. Let me see. How far is it? It is approximately 300 kilometers from here. 300 meters? No, Ayushman. 300 kilometers. What does kilometer mean? In our class, they only taught us about meters. Just like meters, kilometers are also used to measure length. So, is kilometers, like meters and centimeters, is a unit to measure the length? Yes. But centimeters are used to measure objects of short length and meters to measure long lengths. Then why another unit? Because if we want to measure very long lengths, then it is not practical to use meter. Like what things? Like uh, the distance between two cities. I didn't understand. Okay, I'll explain. First, tell me, how many centimeters are there in a meter? Mm, there are 100 centimeters in a meter. Similarly, there are 1000 meters in a kilometer. Then a thousand meters is a lot. Yes, 
much more than the meter. Our school sports competition had a thousand meters race. So the people who participated in it ran one kilometer. Yes. Then one kilometer is a lot, because the people running in it were very tired. And Nani Tal is three hundred kilometers away. As it is so far, we are going by train. If one kilometer is equal to one thousand meters, how many meters away is Nani Tal? It is very easy to calculate. Multiply it by thousand to convert kilometer into meters. To convert three hundred kilometers into meters, I have to multiply three hundred by one thousand. Yes. Then how many meters is it? On multiplying three hundred by one thousand, the answer is three lakh meters. It means we will go three lakh meters away. <laughs> That's why we say it's three hundred kilometers away. But how can I remember it that there are thousand meters in a kilometer, Papa? For this, you just need to remember that kilo means one thousand. Then kilometer will mean one thousand meters. Yes, now it will be easy to remember. But if we are given in meter, how will we convert it into kilometers? Very easy to convert meters into kilometers. Divide it by one thousand. For example, if one thousand meters is to be converted into kilometers, divided by one thousand, the answer will be one kilometer. Got it. Now check on the internet what all is worth visiting in Nainital and start planning so we don't miss anything. Today we learned that the kilometer is a unit of length measurement. There are one thousand meters in a kilometer. The given value is multiplied by one thousand to convert kilometer into meters. And the meter is divided by one thousand to convert to kilometers. Introduction to Kilometer, Part Two. Today you will learn how distance can be written with two units. And how can you add or subtract two lengths given in two units? I'm going on a trip to Nainital. Really, and we are going to Jaipur. Nainital is three hundred kilometers away from here. Is that so? And Jaipur is two eighty kilometers away. I thought you would ask what a kilometer is. No, I know that. Kilometer is a unit of length measurement. Yesterday, my papa told me. Papa told me yesterday too. If Nainital is three hundred kilometers and Jaipur is two hundred and eighty kilometers away, then the distance between Jaipur and Nainital is only twenty kilometers. That means we can also visit Jaipur while going to Nainital. Tell your papa that we can go to both the places as the distance between them is only twenty kilometers. Papa, this time we should go to visit Jaipur along with Nainital. No, the distance between the two is a lot. Let's go to Nainital, and we will go to Jaipur some other time. No, Papa, the distance between Nainital and Jaipur is not much. Only twenty kilometers. No, Ayushman, there is a distance of five hundred and eighty kilometers between the two. No, Riyanj and I have calculated. Nainital is three hundred kilometers and Jaipur is two hundred and eighty kilometers away. If we subtract both, then only twenty kilometers will be left. Yes, but when both are added, then it's five hundred and eighty kilometers. Yes, but why add? Look, we are here, and if we go three hundred kilometers towards right, we will come to Nainital, and if you go two eighty kilometers left from here, we will come to Jaipur. Now tell me, how far is Jaipur from Nainital? The distance between the two is five hundred and eighty kilometers. That's why we cannot go to Jaipur this time. 
we'll go later okay dad i ask you another question related to distance sure my office is 3 kilometers 400 meters away from here what does it mean i know that we can also tell the length using two different units and this means that your office is 3 kilometers and 400 meters away you are right now tell me how far i have to go to the office and come back you go 3 kilometers 400 meters to go to the office and then 3 kilometers 400 meters back so we will add these two numbers all right now add but i cannot understand how they will be added look we can add numbers only when their units are the same so here we will add the value of meter to the meter and we will add the value of kilometers to kilometers if you just add the value of the meter the answer will be 800 meters and adding the value of kilometers the answer will be 6 kilometers this means that you travel 6 kilometers 800 meters to go to and come back from the office ayushman you're absolutely right one more question How much less have I travelled from seven kilometers? If six kilometers, eight hundred meters is deducted from seven kilometers, the answer to your question will be known. Absolutely right. Now subtract. If there is no meter written along with the seven kilometer, then how can we deduct it? I cannot understand that. It's easy to do one thing: convert both distances into meters. To convert seven kilometers into meters, we will multiply one thousand into it. So here it is seven thousand meters. Just like that, multiplying by one thousand in six kilometers, the answer will come six thousand meters. And adding eight hundred meters to it, the answer will be six thousand eight hundred meters. Absolutely right. Now they can be subtracted because the units of both are the same. The answer after subtracting them is 200 meters. That is, you have to cover a distance of 200 meters more to walk seven kilometers a day. Well done, Ayushman. Today you learned that distance or length can also be written in two units. Example: three kilometers, 400 meters. Values of two lengths can be added or subtracted. only when they are written in a single unit production to kilometer part 3 today you will learn about how lengths are added and how to use multiple units to show the same length what are you doing papa i am writing the length of the wall of my factory but why because we have to get the wired boundary to protect the building but how long is the boundary of your factory come help me find it out look on this paper I have drawn the boundary of all sides of the factory and written its length. Now can you help me add it? Okay. The boundary of your office is a square and the length is the same on all sides. That is 352 meters and 63 cm. So to get the boundary's length, we will multiply it by 4. Very good. See what comes after multiplying? 63 multiplied by 4 will give 252 cm. All right. And multiplying 4 into 352 m will be 1408 m. This means that the boundary of your office is 1408 m and 252 cm. According to calculations, what you have said is correct, Ayushman, but it can be written in a better manner. How? Look, at the values in meters You have written fourteen hundred eight meters, but because it is more than a thousand meters, it can also be written in kilometers. Oh yes, I did not think this. I'll do it now. 
to convert 1408 meters into kilometers it will be divided by 1000 yes so what is the answer the answer is 1 kilometer 408 meters but ayushman the value in centimeter is also more than a hundred don't you think it can be written in meters too oh yes it can be written then what are you thinking write it down to convert the value in centimeters to meters one has to divide it by 100 and 252 divided by 100 will be 2 meters 52 centimeters absolutely correct now tell me how much is the total length total length would be 1 kilometer 408 meters and 2 meters 52 centimeters but when there are two values in the meter they can be added yes then it would be better this means the total length of your factory boundary would be 1 kilometer 410 meters and 52 centimeters yes ayushman now completely correct there's just a little change why have you written and in it it's not needed just remove it but on removing it three units will be used in telling the same length right so what three or more units can also be used to write down and mention the length this would be the correct way of writing it one kilometer 410 meters 52 centimeters which means one kilometer and 400 and 10 meters and 52 centimeters now i understand completely you learned today about how lengths are added and several units can be used to show the same length Measurement related word problems. Today we will learn how to use measurement for everyday task. Oh wow, mango! Grandpa, can I eat one? Yes, you can eat it, but will you help me first? Yes, Grandpa. We have to send all these mangoes to our friends and relatives. So, first, Put the mangoes in these boxes. How many boxes do we need, Grandpa? Try to add and find out the total number of mangoes first. Okay, let me do it. 15 and 17 gives 32. 32 and 22 gives 54. 54 plus 18 gives 72. So we have a total of 72 mangoes. Very good. Now we will keep the mangoes in these boxes. Grandpa, how many mangoes can be placed in a box? The boxes can have a dozen of mangoes. That means a box will contain 12 mangoes. Then how many boxes will contain 72 mangoes? Mm, let me show you. On dividing 72 by 12, we'll get um, 6, means 6 boxes. Oh ho! What happened, Grandpa? We have to send mangoes to 10 places and only 6 boxes are made according to 12. Grandpa, don't we have small boxes? Yes, we have. It's a great idea, Goody. If 10 boxes were to be made, then how many mangoes will be there in each box? For this, we will divide 72 by 10. You can pause the video and try to calculate the answer and then verify your answer with the answer shown in the video. The result is 7. Hmm, some mangoes are still left. Yes, Grandpa. Two mangoes are still left. Well, this is so good. Seven mangoes will comfortably fit into ten boxes. And these two remaining mangoes? And this is for you. Thank you, Grandpa. So, before eating the mangoes, tell me one thing. We have to place these ten boxes 
in the cast dicky height of each box is 15 cm and height of dicky is 1 meter so how many boxes can be stacked on the top of each other grandpa what is meter and centimeter these are measuring units see this is 1 cm oh my god this is so small and this is 1 meter and this one is so huge grandpa yes 1 meter means 100 cm so height of dicky is 1 meter that is 100 cm now tell me how many boxes can be stacked on top of each other for this we have to divide 100 by 15 You can pause the video and try to calculate the answer and then verify your answer with the answer shown in the video. We are left with 6 and 10. So 6 boxes can be stacked on the top of each other. It's good. We have to keep 10 boxes. So 5 boxes can be stacked one upon each other. on one side and the rest five boxes can be stacked on the other side and still we will be left with a lot of space 5 and 5 and we are done with 10 boxes so what did we learn today how to use measurement for everyday task measurement is dependent on many factors we saw how to solve questions based on measuring units of length such as meter and centimeter Thank you.